so here we are again and now we have simulated our grid fluid domain 01 for the second time and this time our grid fluid domain has written out a displacement texture because we need the information from that displacement texture in order to create our secondary elements for this from um, for the fluid effects such as splash and foam okay the first one uh, that we are about to create is the so-called splash uh, you can create it by clicking here in the grid fluid menu and selecting splash but before doing so we will um, make the grid fluid invisible again select it and say visible no and what I did um, was also have to do is to set the simulation mode from active into into cache this is very important because um, now when we are setting this to cache uh, when doing the calculations for splash and foam we do not have to we do not have to recalculate the grid fluid domain over and over again so the simulation that we are done we have done right now we are fine with that and now it's time to add in the additional elements these are splash foam and mist uh, so what's this and what I'm talking about the splash is something uh, this is a special form of a container that, that is creating particles at areas where the fluid has a very low resolution. Uh, so this can be used for um, creating those white, white crest splashes that we will be seeing in, in waves like the one that uh, we had in frame 240 something. And um, this is exactly what we need. You could also add um, specialized um, splash nodes all along the um, some elements uh, of the pier down here in order to fill up the gaps um, that are left where when um, fill up the gaps there because there are some problems with the uh, with the distance on in the grid fluid. Uh, besides um, the only real solution to um, avoid those problematic areas and gaps is um, of course to um, make the grid resolution higher so the the, um, the smallest distance inside the cell, the cell distance will decrease and so um, there will be more detail in the mesh but uh, I think most of us don't have the computer or the disk space for doing so but so this is why I left this at 1 million resolution alright let's create the splash so we go there to the grid fluid menu and select splash this will create this green box here uh, now I'll be um, positioning this I'll, be, I'll enter some values that I found were quite good in my test simulations Minus sixteen point four uh, point five four and five point oh eight. Um, the more important thing, the scale. This is uh, seventy point two five four. 9.067 and 67.884 so as you can see um, unfortunately our grid fluid is uh, invisible right now but if I go to frame 0 and make it uh, make it visible again uh, where is it visible display yeah you see that um, our splash is inside the grid fluid the splash yeah. and um, it is above the um, it is slightly above the waterline 
So, um, there's no need for us to have a splash that's down here, and we don't need a splash container that's the size of the, the whole grid domain, because we have no wave that will exceed this height. Um, so, scale the splash in a sensible manner. Don't overdo it. Um, Alright. More important than the, than the scale are these parameters here. The emission rate, this is uh, the amount of particles that are emitted, we will be changing this to 25. Another useful thing in throughout the whole program, RealFlow, is that you can select any parameter. And if you press F1, you'll see the description on the parameter in the help. So when you are um, doing something here, or you're changing values, you're altering stuff, just make sure that you um, you look at you you look at these descriptions and read those. I, I'm not going to read that because uh, I'm I'm doing a tutorial and the tutorial means not. I'm going to read the help file to you. Okay, 25 is quite good. Detail threshold. Um, this is 0 0.2. I'll leave it at 0 0.2, I guess. Um, and there's one thing to remember: uh, the detail thresh threshold that you have been selecting here and that you've been selecting in the foam. Make sure that you do not select a different detail threshold when building the final mesh, because otherwise the particles could be uh, in a strange distance um, to your to your mesh. The angle threshold: uh, I'll leave it at 30 default. Minimum, maximum child. This is uh, value for variation and also a value to in order to control all the value in order to control the amount of particles that are created I uh, add 25 here that's quite right position variation okay we need some some variation I guess uh, more angle variation I put that down to, to 5 because I just want to have particles at the crest Velocity variation, well, probably, ah, whatever. Just to have something that is uh, less working on fine. Now, um, very important, I have to drag the splash here. And what I did when you were away cleaning your flat, I created a K-volume splash, a bigger K-volume that will um, encapsulate the whole scene. And this K volume, this is not inverse because the splash particles are only meant to exist inside of this domain. This is because splash particles are common real flow particles, common FPH real flow particles. This means that they can exist virtually anywhere in space. And sometimes there are miscalculations, and so particles tend to kind of explode, and then you have a particles flying around here and flying around here and flying around here. Even though RealFlow has some algorithms that will eliminate um, those particles, it could happen that uh, this will eat up memory because um, you have to, this will eat up lots of your memory because uh, RealFlow is working with an internal yeah, positioning grid and will mark out where particles are and um, where they could be going. And this could eat up lots of memory and make the computer crash. So when doing particle simulations, I always use um, the old school K volume fields around them just to make sure that the particles cannot escape in a manner I don't want them to escape. Okay, the splash must be linked to the exclusive links, not vice versa, nothing else. Uh, and nothing else, not important. And. Uh, not important. We you also might link the splash to the the pier and the sea ground. And the sea ground. Uh, so they will be colliding with that. But um, when I was testing the simulation, I found that this is uh, you don't need to do so. Um, I found that you really don't need to do so. It's working anyway, and. Um, the less calculation time we have, the better it's working out for us. So I'll be adding gravity because otherwise um, the splash will react as if we were on the moon. I'm using the same gravity as I'm using for the grid fluid domain. But um, you can feel free to experiment with that. Use different gravity for the grid fluid domain and uh, the use the gravity for the splash. 
you also um, I highly encourage you to, to play play along when when simulating the grid. Um, use a try uh, play a try playing along with uh, different gravities. Um, sometimes, if you if your fluid does not want to take the shape that you are um, you are after, sometimes it, it, it's a case of gravity. So try half of the gravity or ten percent of the gravity, double the gravity. Try everything. But with the splash, we're using the the normal gra gravity that we're using here. It's just the um, default setup with a strength of 9.8. Nothing bounded, nothing underwater, nothing whatever. And of course, the K volume that we have been creating for the splash, and the other K volumes, the out and the back draft, because um, we can kill the particles if they are going outside of the the domain. So. That's it, and uh, well, this must be cached, of course, so otherwise the simulation would take ages. And you know, now what we can do is uh, yeah, press simulate, make sure the splashes are yes, um, and then we can press simulate and well, keep on waiting for an, an hour or so and get back to, to your computer and see what the splash has done.